Welcome back to part two of our Velocity Logbook walkthrough. So in the first one, if you haven't watched that already, head back, the link's in the description below. We talked about how to collect your contextual data. So how to filter your data by exercise and by weight, which is all done automatically in the logbook. And then you'll start developing a log of uh, data so you can get that seven day and 30 day average of your performance and compare today's numbers to that recent history. So you can maybe adjust your training based on either low readiness, low velocity, or good days. If you think if things are flying and you're feeling really good, push it up and you can attack those weights with good confidence knowing that you are fresh and well recovered. So what I've done since video one, again, link in the description if you haven't watched that yet. But what I've done since then is I've now filled in a few weeks worth of velocity data into the sheet. So we've got a few weeks worth of trap by deadlifts, the same weights every week, because that will be important. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to look at one way of tracking your progress beyond just are you lifting heavier weights each week. So you might do the same warm-up, 70, 90, 100 kilos on this exercise, and you might do that same warm-up every workout, and you can see your velocities on those weights and use that as an indicator of readiness and an indicator of progress as well. Are you actually getting stronger and more powerful even though the weights aren't necessarily going up? So we're going to click across to the next tab, the progress by weight tab. And we're going to see here there's a, an empty bar chart right now, or an empty scatter plot rather. And we've got uh, a couple of options here. So all you have to do in this section is enter the weight you want to look at. In this case, we're going to look at the 90 kilos. And on the exercise, we're going to pick the trap bar deadlift. What that automatically does is it fills in all the dates and the times that you've done those weights for that exercise. So it filters, it looks for all the times you've done a deadlift on a trap bar at 90 kilos and puts them in here and then adds them to the scatter plot. Now we've only got a few examples here. We've got what uh, five sets, so twice on the 19th, once on the 12th, once on the 5th, and then once on the 26th. And what we can see though is we've got all the velocities for that weight, best rep velocity for those sets. Now, if you look at these numbers, they're all pretty similar. Nothing's really changed much. 0 0.92, 0 0.93, 93, 9. So went back a little bit on that set and then up again to 0 0.95. So a new velocity PB here on the 26th to the 11th. Now, this is only a small sample and a small collection of data, but it kind of illustrates the point that if we keep doing this process, collecting these best rep velocities for this weight, over time, we should see a nice smooth upward trend in velocity at that weight. So even though we've only got was it five sets here of velocity on that 90 kilo trap by deadlift, we've already got one week here. So this uh, this fourth set, the second time, the second set of 90 on that uh, 19th of the 11th, that was us, the slowest time we've ever lived that weight. That makes sense. If we'd already done the 90 before, maybe there was a short rest and we came in and did that second set. So therefore it was slower. On the 26th, what's happened is we've now got a new best rep velocity. So a velocity PB at that given weight. And we can do this for any weight. So we've got the 90 kilos, we can look at 100 kilos and does the same thing at filters. And we can now see our, our velocities on 100 kilos on the trap bar deadlift. 0 0.86, 0 0.88, 88, 8, a big drop, 0.82, same thing on that 19th there. And then on the 26th, a jump to 0 0.9, which is a new velocity PB at that weight. So this session on the 26th looks like it was a pretty good session. Velocities were up, things were moving well across the 90 and the 100, we set two new velocity PBs on those weights. So even though in this example, the athlete isn't progressing their load every week, those mid-level sets, those medium warm-ups, those early work sets, are they, make, are they lifting those sets with more speed and more intent? And in this case, this athlete's making pretty good progress. So in only you know three or four weeks, they've set new PBs on, all their, on both of these sets across the trap bar deadlift. And so you can do this for all your exercises. I don't have any other data in the spreadsheet at the moment, but you go to bench press. I've never done 100 kilos on the bench press, so I've got no data. I think I've got one set. Yep, I've got one set of 90 kilos in there, but I didn't enter the best rep velocity or the reps from last time, so I can't see that over time. But you kind of get the idea. So this, this tool here, if we go back to the trap by deadlift, this tool becomes more and more powerful the more data you put into it. So eventually, you'll have a long list of all these times you've done 90 kilos on the trap by deadlift, and you'll be able to see your best rep velocity. And hopefully that, that purple graph, those purple dots, start trending upwards and upwards as you make progress in those weights. Really simple tool. It's all automatic. All you have to do is fill in these two gray 
boxes with the black border and they will pull in the data from your velocity logbook which we talked about in part one of this series so if you haven't watched that go back and watch that now and that pulls in your data so on this sheet the velocity logbook you get really good context you can see where you're at compared to recent history so if we highlight these cells here and look at just the numbers from the 26th these four sets here we can see that this was a really good day just like we saw in the progress chart so on the seven day and the 30 day average this athlete is well above so green lights across the board this is a good day the athlete is recovered they're fresh they can continue with their plan maybe even progress a little more aggressively than they'd initially planned and then if you come across the progress by weight this might be something you do after your session maybe at your laptop and again like i mentioned in the first video this all works perfectly on phone you'll just need a gmail account and the uh, google sheets app but you can then start seeing your progress on given ex different exercises at different weights if you haven't got yourself a copy of the velocity logbook yet please go do so the link is in the description below just head to vbtcoach.com enter your details sign up for the newsletter you'll get a copy of this sent straight to you so you can start using it and training it really simple tool i think it's a really really powerful way to use your velocity in your training with not that much friction just a couple of extra minutes per session to log this stuff on your phone easily done and away you go you'll get really good results and start to see your progress in more than just how much weight's on the bar 